technology and stress in workplace. How to reduce screen stress. An interview with Hane Ban. Do you ever find it difficult to manage your mood when you're exposed to too much screen time? Life is made easier by digital technology. However, it can also harm your well-being if not handled properly. Fortunately, there are practical ways to manage it so that you can live a more enjoyable and fulfilling life while being productive at work and home. So would you like to learn how to decrease the screen stress while using the benefits of technology, especially in workplace? Then you are in for a treat. Give us a thumbs up if you like this topic. Welcome to Happy and Healthy Mind. My name is Dr. Rosina. Over the last 20 years, I have been serving as a medical doctor specializing in psychiatry, a best-selling author, and a transformative speaker. I believe that our mind is the software that runs the hardware of the brain and body. Therefore, I share practical tips for mental fitness over here so you can live your best life without burnout and unnecessary suffering. For any specific healthcare advice, please consult your healthcare professional. If you find this content helpful, then join our mission of eradicating preventable suffering and suicides by liking, subscribing, and sharing so more people can live their best life with health and happiness. And today we are fortunate to have Hannah Ben, Hannah Ben, sorry, <laughs> uh, with us today. And he's the founder of Breathing.ai, machine learning inventor, award winning, and published researcher in neuroscience and technology, meditation teacher for toddlers, kids, and adults, and lifelong creative learner. He, he overcame years of anxiety and depression using some of these techniques that he's going to teach us today. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited too. Tell me, Hannes, how did this topic become important for you? How was like, how was your life before it became important? Yeah, I, that's a, it's tough to remember. Um, it was, I was really, for many, many years, I had so much severe anxiety and depression. I felt very disconnected. That was the main thing. I was really felt like helpless almost to do anything about it. Um, it was just like, I mean, I remember like the early 2000s, I was just listening to Radiohead, Kid A, very depressive music back then for me, and just kind of that was aligned with, I, mean, I love Radiohead, but very uh, aligned with my feeling when I woke up, I felt down and felt st continuously stressed from situations. Everything was really hard to do, like every little task was was a, a big burden to do and uh, low energy. Yeah, and even like in, in things like, other people enjoyed. I couldn't really find much pleasure because I was so down. So yeah, social presence was like not easy for me as well. Yeah. So a lot of difficulties. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fast forward after you apply some of these tools, how's life different? Yeah, it's like, I really enjoy life and just, you know, just sometimes just you smell like flower or something or the ocean and just like the most, you know, fascinating thing. And just like the, the sense of wonder and a sense of awe, um, you know, the pleasure of taking a deep breath and, you know, letting go exhale something as simple as that can bring me a lot of joy. And, you know, that wasn't there before. So just like taking pleasure in like the simple things of life. I think that's, that's the main benefit and, and enjoying being, being present in each moment. So I see, you know, I see a lot of patients with depression and anxiety. And, and sometimes when I'm trying to teach them some of these breathing techniques, they say, it's like, what's the big deal? Like, you know, <laughs> how's the breathing going to help me? So can you share a little bit more in terms of how it helped you? Yeah, I think what, what like it helped me feel more embodied and present in my own body. And there's also like a thing called interoception. Um, so we can be aware of our, you know, organs, of our breathing, and it's, it's a real like sense. I feel like, and uh, and it's really underestimated how much presence that creates. And um, so, so right now, being aware of, you know, like, am I tense? Can I relax my shoulders? Can I bring awareness to my breathing instead of being distracted by by thoughts or so? I think when I was depressed, there was often, oftentimes, I was thinking about stuff that was not helpful in the moment, 
oftentimes it was like fearful situations or things I generally like have to do. And it was like overwhelming me. So right now when I bring my, of course I have that still, but right now I, I bring my um, awareness back to, you know, taking a deep breath, letting go exhale and being present, relaxing my body. And sometimes then all of a sudden it's like a reset button and it helps me just to be then enjoy life again. Okay. So like when you breathe, you feel a little calmer in the moment, but how does it solve your problems? Yeah, I think there's even studies on sighing. I just read it again earlier today from the UCLA in 2016, that just a simple sigh creates twice as much air flowing in. So it's in it really they describe it also as like a relief, as a reset button. So what I noticed that my breathing was very shallow, like when I was depressed and anxious. So it's like my heart rate was higher. I was like in a constant um, fight or flight, so-called fight or flight mode. So my, my nervous system was in a state that's usually only activated when you're in danger. So I was just like way really overburdening myself. And right now, by taking like a letting go exhale or a really slow inhale, I can just really calm my heart rate, um, my breathing rate, relax my muscles. So my whole body is in a state of tranquility more and like notices like, ah, you know, like I don't have to be in alert mode. I can just be in presence mode and then mm -hmm. kind of like in awe mode. Wonderful. So how does technology stress and screen stress become important in your life? I just wanted to share the practices. So I, I got into neuroscience actually with a project and uh, computer science 2014 with a project called Metaverses. Now mm -hmm. the term is also used by big tech companies. And we studied meditation practices to see like what, what are the most helpful ones mm -hmm. and, and visual stimuli. And then also we, we combined it. So how can we actually create more calming screen experiences because people are already so much on their screen um, right and right. uh and then so does does the screen yeah. cause stress i would say yes because i do believe that um the technologies we're using are disconnected from our well-being so uh, that reminds me oftentimes of when i felt very disconnected from my own body um so i think the technologies we're using they're not recognizing how we're feeling or stress levels and so we can actually make the screen time, the screens more adaptive to our well-being. And that's what I'm really um, excited about and working on, because I think we have too much screen time. And to improve that screen time we have is really what I'm invested in. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of times when they, people talk about screen stress, the only solution is decrease the stress uh, screen time. Well, yeah, you want to decrease stress, uh, screen time, and you want to have like you know more physical activity and stuff, which is you know everybody knows about it. But on the other hand, you know there's the demand of the day, especially with COVID, there was so much more need for the screen to be connected, to be able to work, to be able to do the schooling. So everybody had to be on screen, and that was kind of our savior in a way. But then there is this flip side of it that too much of screen is not good for your eyes or not for your mind and not for your body. Yeah, we really need to develop uh, tools to utilize the benefit of this technology without causing harmful effect on our health. And so, yeah, we would just love to learn, our audience would love to learn some of the tools that we could use to help. I, I would like to ask the audience at this time, if, if you guys can please share, how much, how many hours a day do you spend on screen, uh, whether for work or for recreation? And while people are entering the answer, you tell me, how much time do you spend on screen? <laughs> no, it's way too much. <laughs> no, don't ask me. It's the, it's the irony of running a company or breaks and screen time that I I'm I have to be on screens all the time to communicate because uh -huh. we're remotely working. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Like I, the most stressful notification I get during the week almost is like the average screen time because uh -huh. two weeks. Yeah. So in your research, how much is the average uh, screen time people are spending? Mostly for professionals, like eleven hours, like 11 in, hours. like like that's like including the the, the personal screen time, and mm -hmm. often that's when I talk with colleagues in in New York area. Then they have like some sometimes people say have like fifteen sixteen hours of screen time wow. when they work. In so the more than yeah, more than fifty percent then of your living 
<laughs> all of your life. Way more. <laughs> Almost yeah. off of your waking waking hours. Yeah. And like, you know, being a psychiatrist, we didn't think that we would be spending so much time on screen because we deal with people. But, you know, we see the patients, but then we have to document on the computer. And then with the COVID, we are doing telehealth. So we are seeing patients through on the screen. And so I'm constantly seeing patients on screen, typing reports, answering emails, doing all the other personal relaxation things also on screen. So my time is also pretty high. And so yeah, it's this, this guilt feeling that people carry about being like, you know, you just covered your face when I asked you, right? So there's this guilt that goes with it and everybody recognize it. But then also it is very hard not to use the screen for, you know, work or personal use. So, yeah, so now we need to find out more tools than just decrease your screen time. So what suggestions would you have for people how to how to decrease their stress of using technology for work or personal life? Yeah, so so one thing is also just having programs run that that make the screens more like like reducing the eye strain, for instance, with like color filters, which we also offer and there's other programs too. So because oftentimes, you know, the, the bright background color over the course of the day, it creates a lot of eye strain and dry eyes, you know, we forget to blink sometimes. Right. And another thing is like email apnea, when people open up their, their inbox, people literally are holding their breathing. It's a, it's a real thing and screen apnea. So really like, like this breath holding on the screen. There's also mm -hmm. certain like break reminders, like our program offers that too, but it's, it's free right now for any users. Um, so you get like reminders, you know, just to take a, a deep breath from time to time or to, you know, better posture, of course, to like having reminders you or even like, if it's, me. <laughs> yeah, even, even if it's not coming up on the screen, which we, we offer, but also like having post-it notes, you know, next to the screen to say like, Hey, you know, remind ourselves to, to sit upright. Cause over the course of the day, if, if the posture gets worse, it accumulates and accumulates. And then, you know, we have a constant back pain, like there's like, you know, um, squeeze nerves. So mm -hmm. that's one thing. And then like sounds too, like if we're in an office that's very noisy, we can listen to sounds that are more soothing through the headphones. I, I personally like like calming water, ocean sounds or harp music or so. It makes, it makes a big difference. Sometimes when I forget to listen to it, like I notice, oh, especially in New York with the loud mm -hmm. background sounds. So those are the, the main things, but I think it's really just taking also sometimes the stretching, you know, just shaking the legs, shaking the shoulders out and and definitely deep breath and uh, letting go exhales. <laughs> so. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, so can you teach us some of those breathing techniques that you uh, you have been utilizing while being on your screen for so many hours today? <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, I've worked with Wim Hof for many years and Tibetan masters like Druk Mugyal, and so I learned a lot like how just such a simple thing like belly breathing, for instance, can just like significantly improve every moment. So just, I always say when I guide breathing techniques, um, just having relaxing the belly and having, it's a six pack free zone here. So just letting go of any aspirations to like tighten the belly and just letting go of any tension on the belly and then trying to really just expand the belly on the inhale first and then the chest and then just taking a, a letting go exhale. So really just dropping any stress and then the next inhale is even more deeper, like a balloon belly inhale with a really expansive belly and chest and throat, expanding everything. And then again, just a letting go exhale, <sighs> dropping the shoulders, maybe another deep inhale, moving the shoulders all the way up to the ears. And then a letting go exhale, <sighs> just dropping then, maybe also closing the eyes and just resenting ourselves by focusing on our breathing. It's the way from our thoughts, from our visuals, just bringing awareness to our breathing and expanding our belly, our chest, our throat, our whole body like a balloon with a smile. And then just a letting go exhale, <sighs> dropping any stress. And there's really a lot of studies on like adding a smile, for instance, so create so-called happy hormones. Um, there's smile and laughter yoga. There's also like relaxing our shoulders helps. A letting go exhale does something like, <sighs> Letting go exhale creates twice as much air flowing in. 
That's the study from UCLA. And then there's like a really deep belly in here, combined with a letting go axial and a smile. <sighs> it's also what kind of part of the Wim Hof method that's been scientifically studied to even resist injection of E. coli bacteria. There's also a breath holding part of that. When we when you take 30 of those deep inhales and letting go axials, <sighs> and then if you do this 30 times, you feel might maybe a little bit lightheaded or dizzy but you really change your blood chemistry for the better. And you can um, do it like really like almost like a personal world record in holding your breathing. It's like really easy to hold your breathing for a minute or two. And one simple trick is always like adding a smile. So when you do this, like when you're sitting at your office and you feel very stressed, it's like, oh wait, maybe I can close my, eye, my eyes for a deep inhale, with a smile, and just a <sighs> letting go exhale. And if you still feel stressed, you can do another one of these deep inhale with a smile. Shoulders up and dropping the shoulders. <sighs> and maybe when you open your eyes, maybe your smile stays on your face and you feel more relaxed and the whole world opens up again. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So how frequently people should be doing this? I would just like, like literally, like if we wouldn't sigh throughout the day multiple times, we would, we would die. And because uh, it like really restricts if we don't sigh or all our alveoli in our lung wings get clustered. So I would always recommend just like having a post up note or like, you know, like using programs like our breathing AI to remind yourself to take a deep breath as often as possible. Because um, breathing has really shown to um, calm the nervous system for longevity, for to really like the whole blood circulation. There's so many benefits of belly breathing. So I would always recommend to almost breathe like like through the belly and with a smile all the time and whenever you also feel it's needed just take a letting go exhale so i all try to do it all day long <laughs> so. yeah yeah so yeah one of the things the biggest problem is that people forget mm -hmm. so like sometimes i suggest to people put like an hour alarm so every hour take one minute mm -hmm. of a breathing break sometimes it's just kind of so simple that people feel it's not a big thing and mm. and sometimes once they do realize then they forget about it so i i tell people to have that alarm and like in between the meetings do a relaxation mm. exercise so i try to do it in between patients people also forget to drink water mm. right so yeah so uh, i just in my practice i try to educate people to in between each meeting, each episode, each block of thing that you are doing, you know, have that one minute break when you get up, you stretch, you drink a glass of water and you take a deep breath. So that's wonderful. What other techniques can you teach our audience that may decrease their screen stress? Yeah, I think also like we hold a lot of tension in our body, not only just in our shoulders and neck with bad posture, but also in our legs sometimes. Like sometimes like the the sides and the legs become very tense and then it, you know, it ends up being, being like very tense um, muscles there. So just checking in on our legs, stretching them even on the, on the, when we're sitting on the table or also using a standing desk to make sure we get some movement or like a desk that could be moved up and down. It really makes a big difference to sometimes stand up and to get those stretches in especially you know with a 40 hour work week or more or even less just like just sitting all the time has very detrimental effects on our whole body and it's hard to kind of compensate to balance that out with exercises later on so so also like if you do like meditation exercises like to combat the screen time there's like also a lot of programs coming up in hours that make the screen time better so getting reminders we have like movement reminders, breath work reminders, like simple meditation practices. You can also move your eyes, for instance, to, to remind yourself to blink. Sometimes you forget to blink and then the eyes get very dry and eye strain. It's a huge problem. Mm. Um, color filters help, but also just sometimes to look from left to right, focus on something for 20 seconds. There's the 2020 rule, 2020 20 rule to focus on things. Um, what is the 2020 20, 20 rule? I don't know about it. Oh, I just like to focus on, on certain things. Um, there's more to it that I get to a little explain, but also focus on other things for like 20 seconds and just shift shift the mind a little bit and to really like, you know, shift away from the ongoing task because sometimes, and, and also that's why, you know, focus on breathing, focus on relaxation, focus on something nice, also like gratitude. I love to just sometimes, you know, like close my eyes, focus on somebody or a situation where I feel so much gratitude 
and then like you know allowing myself to feel that gratitude and like that self-care sending gratitude to myself imagining i have like a gratitude energy ball in my heart region and sending out some gratitude you know to, to like a colleague or a friend or so just to kind of have some loving kindness meditation i think there's also studies on a lot on gratitude and how how beneficial that is to just enjoy life and to make sure that you know we're present in the moment with some you know with joy and we can like uh, intentionally do that by really bringing um bringing gratitude in our life by focusing on gratitude and in certain situations we'll feel feel just more alive and, yeah. and appreciated and taken care of yeah yeah gratitude is has played a big role in my life that's why i talk about i have published a guided gratitude journal it's called stress to joy guided gratitude journal and based on kind of my practices that have developed over years of so mm -hmm. every day my day starts with a gratitude journal nice that's so uh, beautiful what you are teaching is that throughout the day when you are on screen either you get some software like this that reminds you or set up your own system where you are doing mm -hmm. these things scattered through the day that includes let's kind of uh, summarize for people so you talked about breathing techniques so you mm -hmm. breathe deeply you talked about focusing on your legs so stretch your legs mm -hmm. you talked about uh, raising the shoulder and clearing the tension from your shoulder then you talked about gratitude like you know sending the what what did you say the ball of gratitude towards your, how do you do that yeah just like imagine yourself you have like an energy ball like a or fire in your uh -huh. heart region uh -huh. and with like i always like we just visualize it in in the meditation practice you just visualize that you can like bring energy to it with a deep inhale uh-huh and then like a, like a superhero you can send it out like a laser beam from your heart region on a letting go axial uh -huh. <laughs> and you can right. also send it through your own body so uh -huh. uh, or, or super hero so um just making sure that you know you you hone in on your own superpowers of deep breathing relaxing and you know making sure that your heart is nourished <clears throat> wonderful wonderful yeah i had not heard about that so okay <laughs> so sending the fireball of energy like superhero you can be superhero <laughs> of your life or superhero of your friends lives where you can send them loving kindness towards them and that could also help and do you think people should still try to reduce the screen time yes and but i also <laughs> think what we've noticed what we notice actually when people well in our case they, they use our program like and color filters but there's other color filters too or other like break reminders and stuff but they actually reduce their stress symptoms by 50% they were also had a better relationship with felt they had a better relationship with technology and they had less screen time so significantly like i think almost like 20% less screen time so they they were probably more productive they were less distracted they had to probably use less social media we we had didn't have that in the questionnaire you know they would probably use less distraction of social media which also sometimes used when people are get stressed so they distract themselves so being more productive on the screen without having more screen time actually having less screen time and having less stress stress symptoms so so i think like i would recommend anybody to try that out or post it notes or other programs to make that screen time we have more relaxing and then seeing actually what happens um, cuz it's so much light there's so much static and we always have to adapt to the screen times that's that's always the one thing that comes to my mind like our nervous system has to adapt to the technologies we never really look somebody truly in the eyes we always look in the camera so there's like a lot of disconnect from reality and actually how can we make that more adaptive or at least make sure that we are taking care of ourselves while we're on the screen wonderful wonderful so if people want to learn more about you how can they find more information about you yeah on our website breathing.ai my email is hannes@breathing.ai I'm also on Instagram. I have a meetup group. I'm on LinkedIn and always happy to chat. Sometimes I guide um breathing sessions through meetup too or on Instagram or so. Always happy to so a lot of times I collaborate with other practitioners so we have like um joint sessions and uh yeah. Wonderful. And so I want to you want to share how people can get the free download of your program. Yes, it's on our website. Um there's a try for free button. It's still for free, so it soon it's going to be like more comprehensive with additional features and a subscription. So but you can download it for free and try it out and would love to get your feedback. If you like it, please leave a review. Um it's on the Chrome store, so it runs on Chrome browsers, on Opera and Microsoft Edge and uh Brave, so and a few more soon.
<laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, and then thank you for offering the gift that you are going to share with us, the PDF of different breathing techniques so that you guys have utilized in this program that you have developed. And as always, any of you who wants to get this download, you can go to the website name is just happyandhealthymind.com. And there's a resource button that you can click to download all the resources that have been shared by different guests in our programs. And if you are in US and you would like to get the text for reminders for future programs, you can, you can text the word joyful to the number 38470 and we'd be happy to send you the reminders and resources link. All right, so thank you so much for joining us today. Let me leave you with this question today is the first day of the rest of your life. You have learned some techniques today. What are you going to do? Are you going to just let it go from one year to the other? Or you're going to start practicing at least one technique starting today. Every, every day is a new day and every day is a new opportunity to get better and realize your best potential. So live your life fully on that note, stay safe, happy and healthy. Till next time, Dr. Rosina.